Hello, I'm Kim Sauer for EMS Now here at Productronica 2013. I'm joined today by Sean Langbridge from Cyber Optics. Sean, good to see you again Kim, here in Munich. Great to see you. It's a little bit good cold afternoon. outside, but it, warm inside the hall. And it I think it's a little bit chilly, right? It, so. Yeah, but the industry has come together once again every two years at Productronica and is um, sort of celebrating what's what's new and fresh about you know what what we've we've got in the market. So right. let's. Look back over the last two years, when we last met here at Productronica, what have you been working on? And, and then describe a little bit what's new and what you're showing here okay. on the show. Yeah, certainly, Kim. We have a new, uh, S, well, a new 3D SPI machine at the show, the SC600, that's been in development for the last two years. So I think we just touched upon that at the last Productronica, but it's actually here that the show we're launching it. This is a complete redesigned machine, new sensor, dual illumination, shadow free technology, and a complete rewrite of the user interface. It's touch screen, and we've taken into consideration the way the market's been moving and what our customers are looking for, and that is ease of use, real fast time to program, fast time to set up. So it plays really well in uh, the North American, the European regions, where programming time is really important. Mm -hmm. So that's new at the show. So ease of use is is something that more and more people have been talking about yeah. over the past years. Is, uh, is it because the people who are operating the software aren't, don't need to have the knowledge anymore and therefore you have to adapt? I, I think it's, it's globalization's played yeah. a part here. We now have this equipment in China, in some of the emerging uh, geographies, uh, Mexico, Brazil, but, but predominantly China. So of course the... the you need uh, op good operator, or you did need good operator skills to uh, run inspection equipment in the past. And what we're trying to do is reduce the technical level required to operate inspection machines to make the cost of ownership much lower for mm. our customers. So I think that's what's driving ease of use. This sort of global reach or outlook or uh, sort of approach must have huge challenges in terms of how you design and exactly. you know not just physically how high things need to be for, for different geographies, but also in terms of language. Right. Uh, how have you dealt with those well, sort of I things? I think it's a given now that you have to have multi-language software on your equipment. You need to have touchscreen where possible, and so it's just, uh, just about everyone has a smartphone now around the world. And so you see most of the equipment manufacturers now are following either the Apple or the Android or the Samsung route and making the UI appear like a tablet or a smartphone. Mm. So touch screen, very easy to uh, understand graphics. And, yeah. and you've got a lot of synergy now with the mm. smartphone market. Mm. Which I suppose makes it even easier to use because that's what people yeah. are used to. So uh, obviously that covers the ease of use. What, what about the more technical side or the, the, the information you get out of it? What sort of improvements that, have we seen that's there? That's a good question and a very good point because we're seeing, if you go back five years, ten years in our marketplace, inspection machines were islands of information. And now there's a huge drive for integration between not only inspection machines on the line, but uh, the production equipment associated with the inspection machine. So you've got feedback to screen printer, feed forward to placement machine, total line analysis and traceability. So that's huge now. So, there's, so basically, you need to be talking to individual machines right. um, and sort of integrating there. But then also there's those total management systems as well, I suppose, where you need to fin fill into or feed into. Um, how do you go about that? Because that must be you. You basically you're, you're working with all sorts of different machine producers right. and vendors and software people yeah. and uh, all sorts. Uh, exactly. I mean, right now it's done on an individual basis. I think we're starting to see. If you look around the show, you can see there's feedback to screen printer coming from most 3D SPI uh, suppliers now, and they'll soon, I'm sure, be a standard for that. That'll become a standard feature in the market. And I think feed forward will probably go the same way. Right now it's up to individual customers and, and manufacturers are driving this. But I'm sure at some point we'll have an industry standard for this integration. Mm. So we don't have to do it several times. It's, mm. There's just one standard. So at the moment you're very much bespoking it per That's right. customer, which it, yeah. in, in itself is, is very beneficial, I suppose. Right. You know, every customer has different needs. Well, we're so. treating it as a differentiator. Yeah. If we can develop something which is unique, then of course that adds mm. value to our customers. Mm. 
Talking about your customers, what sort of developments have we seen there? Is it, uh, you know, you're, you're a global company, obviously, I see you all around the world at these shows and always talking about what, what you do in those individual geographies. Um, where do you see the growth markets? Where do you see developments or changes? Uh, the growth for us, uh, speaking Europe, uh, mainly it's automotive. Automotive is still quite strong for us. In Asia, the key market has been uh, Taiwanese ODMs. We've been very strong there with three or four key customers over the years, and they've grown considerably. We've grown with them, mainly in uh, laptop uh, production. Mm -hmm. uh, that's starting to slow down a little bit, so there's uh, a gradual decline of laptop production that's moving over to tablet or phablet, as we say now, yep. as we see the crossover from the phone to the tablet. So we see some migration there. Uh, so we're looking to uh, try and penetrate more of the tablet manufacturers and phablet manufacturers. Uh, so that's uh, driving our sales opportunities in Asia. North America is mainly industrial OEM and automotive like Europe. So they're our target markets and that's where most of our key customers are currently. So North America and Europe. And, and Europe. For automotive, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so for uh, this year therefore great developments and um, and a good outlook so in the next two years what what, what are you working on what are we going to see if you can already say say what, what are we going to see in two years time we have a, a big company focused right now on AOI we, we launched a new AOI image analysis technology when we talked about a year ago called AI square and that's aimed at new product introduction fast time to program fast time to set up so you can have a meaningful inspection, a uh, well, meaningful result from a single PCB programming. Mm -hmm. We launched that a year ago. The market is starting to move towards 3D in AOI, and you see a lot of companies here starting to launch mm -hmm. 3D-enabled uh, systems. I see the market near to moving to 2D, 3D combination solutions. I'm not sure if, it, if everybody actually needs 100% 3D measurement in the uh, AOI equipment. I see the market trending towards a combined 2D, 3D solution, and we're working uh, very hard to develop our own solution in that space. And you'll see a, a very innovative solution from us next year in, in 3D AY, okay. which we're developing right now. We're halfway down the track. I can't say too much about it because we have a lot of patent applications sure. uh, being filed in the, in the US, but it is quite innovative. So Sounds exciting. Hopefully next time we talk, yeah, I can tell absolutely. you more about it. What have we got next year? Vegas, yeah. maybe. Oh, Vegas, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'll find my diary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much Kim, for you. Um, talking always. to us today, and uh, great to see you in Munich again. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Bye for now.